Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how you can get an awesome Les Paul guitar for like less than 300 bucks American. The bang for your buck on this thing is going to be unreal. I'm going to show you basically how to do most of this without really needing any fancy equipment or special skills or anything like that. And I think we're going to be pretty happy with it. So if you haven't already seen the kind of intro unboxing video, check that out. I'll put a link in the description of that. It looks great. The kit looks awesome. I put the neck in there and uh, it's a set neck, of course, so I didn't glue it in yet, but I pushed it in, put a couple tuning pegs on, put the bridge on and made sure that everything lined up properly because I have done a kit that one in the corner actually, where that stuff didn't line up right and the neck went in kind of crooked. But this one looks awesome. I think it's gonna be fantastic. So now we're gonna move right on to one of the most important parts, the fretwork, the neck itself. I did say that this was gonna be an awesome Les Paul and not just an awesome looking one. So we need to make sure that all of that is set up properly. Right now I can tell you this particular one, the fret ends feel nice, no problems there. I'm happy with them, but you know, that doesn't always happen that way. These kits sometimes have a little bit of sharpness to them. So we'll talk about how to deal with that and uh, we'll get this thing checked out and see how it's gonna work. If you wanna follow along and make yourself a guitar just like this, you can get this kit in the description. That's where the link is. It's an affiliate link for solo music gear. Check it out there. As well as most of the materials that I'm gonna be using, you'll see the finish I put on and everything. The links for that stuff are all in the Amazon page down there, my influencer influencer page rather so have a look at that as well and yeah you can pick up pretty much everything you need for this so for starters here we need this neck to be nice and straight so what we do is take a notch straight edge put it on here make sure you got the right size and this one isn't quite straight it's a little bit bowed that way so we're gonna have to loosen off our truss rod slightly you just take your allen key and just little turns here. We don't want to overdo it. Give it a little push in case there was some tension holding it in place there. And then we'll try this again. Not quite there yet. And again, and you just keep doing this until you get it right. Remember, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Tightening it causes it to pull that way, it's straightened out, and loosening it causes it to bow this way. So right now, it's too far that way, I need to loosen it so we get closer to flat. All right, so this is perfect now. If I go ahead and put this on here, no gaps, no rocking, just nice and flat, and that is what we need. Now that that's settled, we can go in with our fret rocker and check and make sure that there aren't any high or low spots. If you haven't seen this, the way it works is you put it on here, you've got different sides for the different gaps because some of these frets are closer together than others. And you just put it on here and check if it rocks, right? So you do that and uh, you kind of, yeah, wiggle it back and forth and that's why it's called a fret rocker. If there are low spots, it'll wiggle. So right now, you know, if this fret's low, I won't be able to tell, but if one of these are, I will. And then I move over here and if the second fret is low here, now I'll be able to tell, but if the third fret's low, I wouldn't, which is why I already checked it here, and I'll check it again here. So, so far, no problems. Make sure um, you're, you're not accidentally contacting four frets. All right, so there we've got a little bit of rock. And yeah, you go through and check them all the same way, and next we can do our leveling. So for the leveling, what we need to do is make sure that we don't end up with any low spots. So we're gonna need to mark the frets, but first I highly recommend that you tape off your fretboard to protect it so that you don't end up doing any damage to the fretboard itself. Um, one of the tricks that I've kind of picked up and I think a lot of people already know for taping it off is to start by running a long line of tape down the sides. And the, the theory here and sometimes it works better than other times, is that if you put one there first, then when you go to remove all the pieces of tape that you're running across, they should all kind of lift up with this one. Now, again, sometimes it just kind of doesn't work that way, but a lot of the times it does. So run your line of tape down the sides and then tape off your frets. You can get a couple different thicknesses of tape if you want to help you do this. Sometimes that makes it a little bit easier. 
Don't get lazy with this. It doesn't take all that long. Tape off your fretboard and make sure that it is well protected because if you damage your fretboard, you're gonna regret it. All right, so we've got this all taped off and protected here now. We saw how I used the razor blade when I needed to do to trim this stuff to the proper width. Now we need to mark the frets, which is why I have this Sharpie. I wanna make sure when all's said and done that I don't have any low spots. So in order to prevent that and to be able to gauge that, I need to have the tops of the frets marked. Why is this being such a pain? Tops of the frets marked so that I can tell when something is low. Now you only wanna mark the top because you only wanna file down or sand down until there's a line of silver on the top of all of them. If you go too far, then you have to do a lot more work after for recrowning, recrowning and everything. So really the idea is to just mark a nice little line along the top of each of them so that you'll be able to gauge whether you flatten them all or not. Now once you've got them all marked like that, the next step is to flatten them out. This part is where you need to be really careful, okay? You, <laughs> First of all, the fretboard is radius, and some of them have a compound radius. Uh, and second, you don't want to damage your frets. They're a very important part of the guitar. So they make radius leveling blocks, radius sanding blocks that you can use to do this. They make simple flat sanding blocks that you can use to do this. You attach a piece of sandpaper to them, and they're straight, and you go like, you just go over them. They also make fret leveling files and stuff like that. When you're using a file, the idea is it needs to be single cut. You want a single cut file so you're not gouging these things. So in the interest of keeping this cheap, because I said I would keep everything here easy and accessible, I just have an axe file. It's a single cut on one side and a double cut on the other. I'm gonna use the single cut side for this. This isn't comfortable, it's not perfect. You could glue it to a piece of wood to make it more comfortable but I use it for other stuff as well, so I'm not gonna do that. The idea here is pretty straightforward. First of all, we're gonna support the neck with something, and then we're gonna come in and file these flat. But, again, we have a radius to worry about, so when you're using something like this, that's fairly thin, you have to be very careful to respect that radius and not flatten this thing out so that you've got a flat surface here, because that's not what we're looking for. That's not how an electric guitar like this works. Maybe a classical guitar, yes, but again, respect the radius when you do this and be cautious. So I'm gonna put a paint can under mine to support it and put it under here so it doesn't move. And I'm just gonna carefully go in with my file and go until the top is clean on all of these and doesn't have any Sharpie left. Now you'll notice that, maybe you'll notice I'm moving across the fretboard as I go, and I'm doing one even stroke on each part of it, and then I'm coming back. That's because of that radius. And right away, what I notice is most of these are now clean on the top after just that little bit, but a couple of them have a little bit of Sharpie left. So I'm almost done. You wanna avoid doing more, this more than you absolutely have to. I'm almost done, I just need a couple more swipes to get rid of some Sharpie that is accumulated on these. But again, if it's not all in the same spot, you still have to go over the entire thing. So that you don't mess up your radius. All right, so that's done now. Because I did as little of that as possible, I have very little crowning work to do. These have just a tiny, thin, flat edge on top of them. So I'm just gonna hit them with a file once or twice. You should use a crowning file for this. I've got a couple little diamond files that are made for that. They're gonna work great. But worst case scenario, you can go in with something like a fingernail file. And in fact, when you go to round the edges after, if you need to do that, a fingernail file is perfectly adequate, very cheap, very easy to use. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with going for an option like that. So I'm just gonna quickly do a little bit of crowning. We'll show you kind of the 
the general concept of how that works, but all it is really is we're just rounding off the top a little bit, creating a crown on top so that the string is somewhere to fret properly. And then we'll round the edges ever so slightly, even though mine are quite comfortable, but I'll show you that. And then we'll get to work on polishing these frets and they'll be good to go. Now that we've got them all rounded and everything, they feel nice, it's time to get them polished. Polishing your frets is very important, all right? A lot of people overlook this step, but the better your polish is on your frets, the nicer your guitar is gonna play, the less friction you're gonna have, the easier it's gonna be to bend. It's just a better playing instrument when it has a nice polished fret. There are a few different ways to do this initial stage for this. We'll come in after with some actual polish real quick, but for this first bit, you're gonna want an abrasive. There are a few ways, like I said, a lot of people do it with fine grit sandpaper. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great option. Uh, steel wool is another popular choice, one that I disagree with personally because I think that as those little fibers break off, they can get into the areas on the sides of the frets, which is kind of gross. You don't really want that. It makes a bit of a mess. And also you're playing an instrument here that's gonna end up with magnets in it, pickups. So the less I can put steel fibers all over it, generally the happier I am with a few notable exceptions. But my favorite choice, by actually a fairly strong margin, is the Crimson Guitars fret erasers. They come in four different abrasive um, ratings. We've got coarse, medium, fine, super fine, and I just quickly work my way through them. I'll show you on these frets that are kind of right in front of you here. And just go over a couple times. Cleans the top up nicely. That one's a little bit on the coarse side, so then we come in with the medium. You know, it really doesn't get much easier than this, right? It's very straightforward. Look how fast that is. Fine. It's nice too, because as you do this, you get a groove forming in the bottom of the eraser, and then you can basically polish up the whole fret at once and not really have to change angles because you're going over the whole thing with the groove there. Kind of a convenient side benefit. And then we come in with the extra fine, super fine rather. Sorry, the camera's shaking there. This table isn't as stable as I would like it to be. And right there, we've got pretty much a fully polished set of those three frets that I did. They're, yeah, they're pretty nice. We're gonna come in with an actual polish after this real quick and finish them up. But before we do that, I'm gonna go through with the fret erasers, polish up the rest of these, and then we'll be good to move on. All right, so those are looking pretty good, nice and shiny, but we can make them shinier and that's gonna make them better. Um, I've got some AutoSol metal, metal polish here. This is one of my top choices, this and, and the Mother's Aluminum polish. Basically what you want is something relatively thick, not like an automotive clear coat polish. And the only real reason you need something relatively thick or would prefer that generally is so you don't get the liquid going down inside between the frets and the fretboard and causing problems there. So all you need is this and a little rag. You can use a Dremel tool and felt and all that crap, but it's really not necessary. This is very fast, doesn't take long. You just rub this on there real hard until it turns black, and that's about it. Let me show you. So we'll knead this around a little bit, just because I'm used to working with Bondo and that's what you do with Bondo. <laughs> and we'll put just a little bit on our cloth here. That was not a little bit. That was an absurd amount. Okay, looks like I'm prepping a few of these. 
All right, so we get some on our, on our rag, make sure it's on the fret, and then just, just give it a good rub. Rub it like it's Friday night. Just go, go at it. Get lots of pressure on there, and you'll notice that it turns black. So that's what you want. Just go hard until it turns black, and then clean it off, and we're left with a beautifully shiny fret. And you do that for all of them. It doesn't take very long at all. Pretty straightforward. There's really no need to resort to power tools on this. You can get this all done in a matter of a few minutes. Woo, those look good. Nice and shiny, low friction. That's exactly what we're looking for. And hey, look at that camera work, hey? I told you guys I would get better at that stuff eventually. Anyway, so now our frets are all polished up and check this out. Ha! Trick actually worked for a change. I say that like it's not supposed to, but it's a little hit and miss, I'll admit. If you use high quality tape, this tends to work pretty well, and this stuff comes off relatively quickly. This actually only took a couple minutes, and we were back to having a nice cleaned up prep. Oh, and we've got spoilers, uh, which I put there, so you're welcome. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you did like it, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate that. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Drop your questions and comments down below, and I will see you next time.